Hi, my name's Bill Towns. Um, I come from a little village in the central west of Cargo. I didn't originate from there. Um, I'm from the Camilleroy tribe. I was born in Pilliga. Um, it started at about 21, trying to figure out how to be a father, what to do, how to get my family in order, how to love them, how to care for them, how to father. I guess I didn't have a clue. I thought I did. Like I um, had a job, had a house and everything went well. And then all of a sudden I found myself lost, completely bushed, with no help, no guidance, but I was completely lost in soul, spirit, mind and body, and I didn't know what to do. So in short, I found myself at AA, at the advice of my wife, and I walked into the rooms and I felt like I'd come home. The peace and the presence that was in the rooms took my breath away. One older lady stood up and the words that she said set me free and I haven't drank since and that's 1998 and it's 2015 now, um, which is quite extraordinary. I felt this presence come in and completely take everything away and then I said, wow, this is unbelievable and I was so excited. I was just absolutely blown away by what had happened to me. I went home a different man that day but had many, many issues I had to deal with. Um, where I am today is quite extraordinary, really. Um, as I went through my life, I built my relationship with the Lord. He was so patient, gracious and kind to me, as was with my wife and my children, to shape me into what I've become. My Indigenous connections, I'm really searching out. Um, Dad denied that he was Aboriginal. Um, but my cousins have all done their research and they've traced the history back. And where we come from is we come out of the Camilleroy tribe um, around Weewar and Pilliga um, and Narrabri. Grandmother's mother wasn't allowed to be buried in a normal cemetery because of her Aboriginality descent. She was buried somewhere else and they haven't been able to find her grave. He restored my family, he restored my children and he's still restoring me. And I'm getting better bigger and stronger and the next part of the journey was to do a spiritual ride across Australia. The vision that I was given, God gives you vision and that things change, everything just changed. It was the Malachi scripture return, children to their fathers and fathers to their children. It was tough and it was hard but he said to me, Bill, I want you to do it quietly and he said, if you do it in the flesh, I'll do it in the spirit. And he said it's not by might, it's by his spirit and truth. Um, and I've got to admit, I was scared. I was absolutely petrified for a young man who was too scared to drive a motor car out of the speed limits of Orange when he was 18 without his mates in the car to be the age that I was to ride from one side of Australia, Geraldton, to Maruya with four horses was just beyond my imagination. And I did it. I did it and God led me all the way. He's just got so many good things. If we listen up, and he's got so many signs and wonders, if you listen up, he just wants to bless Australia. He really does. Well, I thought it was about returning fathers to the children and children to the fathers. But that old journey, he was returning me to him. That's it in a nutshell. Um, I had doubt about my own worth, my own value, my own self. The fathership that, that I didn't receive my father with total respect to my father because he didn't get it either. But somewhere something's got to change. He was fathering me and I was growing and growing. And then as I tried to father Graham, who was with me, and, and I ended up fathering a lot of people on the way through, but there was he was removing all my shame, all my grief, and all my guilt from all my fathering and all my sins. Now I knew that the blood of Jesus cleans all sins. Like you think you do, but you don't. And I believe that he was healing me from the inside out and he'd waited so long to do it so that I would understand that he did love me. He really did love me and he is very real. He said, Bill, he said, you've got to get this. Because when you get this, you can give it. And when you get this, 
the other people will get it, the nation will get it, and then we will walk in forgiveness and we will walk, look in love. But until you love you, until you really love you and understand that I love you, you can't give it away. That was four years ago, and I think I'm just starting to find my feet now. It was getting me real with myself. Like even, even with that Christian walk and all the things that I did, it was still about Bill, really. Um, it, and I think there was still control there that I wasn't aware of. There was still chasing the rainbow for that sort of addiction sort of a thing that goes on. Um, was still there. But he didn't want me to go back to being religious in a born again way. He really wanted me to be real. That my yes was yes, my no was no, and um, he said we're supposed to have love, joy, peace. He said to me, you're my beloved son, and I'm well pleased. And I thought, with all my history, how could you even think that? And, and I know that he's died for me, and I understand all that, but not really. You don't really mean that, that you're well pleased with me and you love me. And I couldn't get it. Now, this is the, the, the truth. I was at my kitchen bench, and it was before I went on the ride. And I opened up my Bible and I was reading it. And that scripture, my beloved son, to whom I'm well pleased. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's about Jesus, and I had a bit of a think about it. How wouldn't that be nice to be like that if God thought that of me, that scripture? And I, um, okay, and I shut the Bible. That's good. Yeah, what a wonderful Jesus. And I opened up the book, Bible again. You're my beloved son. I'm well pleased. Okay, fair enough. Well, good. That's wonderful. And I said, wouldn't it be good to be like that? I'm talking about myself. And I shut the Bible. The third time I opened the Bible up, I went straight back to that page, that scripture, and the words started to move on the page. You are my beloved son, to I am well pleased. And I just jumped up and started to dance on the spot. I started dancing around the kitchen table like, like I actually for a moment thought I'd lost it. But this real nice feeling filled me right through my whole body and just picked me up. I just started laughing and I was dancing. That's for real, that's for real. And I'm bouncing around on the spot and I'm spinning in circles and I'm doing high fives and I'm spinning and I shut the book. It went into me. What I would say to people who, who don't know Jesus, he knows you. All your ups and downs, everything you don't like about yourself, everything you like about yourself, he knows. He will set you free from what your own mind does to you and how you feel about yourself. He will show you who you really are. He will show you how remarkable you are. He'll show you how exquisite you are. He'll show you things about yourself that you won't believe it's you. He will, he will set you free that much that, that you'll want to fly. You'll feel like you can fly. You'll start to understand things about animals, the world, people, places and things. You, you will be gobsmacked by yourself. But he is so liberating and so free, you will feel like you're walking on air. And anything, and you will get there. Um, one day at the front of my house, um, I was having some issues. I hadn't had a drink for 13 or 14 years, all these things going on, and my life got hairy. It got a little bit off. This is the truth, and this is what happened to me. It was like my wife was going to leave me because of issues which I had no control over. It looked like I was going to lose my job. And so here's Bill sitting in a mess out in the front of his house, ball of my eyes out. And I said, how can it be? I've tried to do everything right. I don't drink, I don't do this, I don't do that. I'm going to church, I'm paying my bills, I'm doing everything nice, I treat everybody, I'm doing nothing wrong. And I'm just about to lose everything. It's gone. I said, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And, and I was fearful and I was scared. And I was sitting there and the presence of God fell and it just fell and it covered me. And this voice said, Bill, he said, um, you're in a mess. And I said, of course I am. Look, look, I don't know how Job felt. This is terrible. He said, you got me. I said, well, that's good. I said, but look, look, can't you see my mess? He said, well, 
He said, you reckon that feels terrible? I said, it's horrible. I've never felt like this in my life. He said, come with me. So I went with him and we went down into a depth, a dark place. And I was all right. The Lord was with me and we're standing there. He said, look, Bill, he said, I just want you to sit there in this dark spot. He said, I'm just going to remove my spark from you for a time so small, it's immeasurable. Nothing can measure it. I'm just going to take my spirit from you for a moment. All right? I said, oh, God, sound simple. No worries. Well, he removed that thing from me for a time that was so small, and I've never felt so much pain, anguish, grief, fear, scared, and fright in all my life. I didn't know that even with all my wrongs and everything that was wrong with the Spirit of God, that spark was in me, that he breathed into me when he first breathed into man. And he removed that from me and I became nothing. So he put it back almost immediately and I said, don't ever, ever do that again. I never, ever want to experience that again. He said, well, come with me. And then we came back up to where I was sitting on the pile of rocks. He said, what's this like? I said, it's going to be good to be back to do battle to save the marriage. It's good to be back to do battle to save my job. And I'll have to go and front the church and sort that stuff out. It's just good to be back here amongst that. But don't take your spirit from me. Not even for a moment ever again. Whatever condition I'm in, I can't handle that. He said, righty, I said, come with me. So we went up into the heavens. And he took me up into the heavens. And I went up with him. Now it was just like a room, like a waiting room. Nothing special about it, anything there. And he said, Bill, I'm just gonna give you more of my presence. And he gave me more of his presence and more of his spirit. And I just felt myself just grow. And I, went, I said, I do not want to ever leave this place. And I could look down and I could see everything that was going on, my work, my church, my family, a whole lot. And I wasn't budging from this spot. I wasn't budged from this spot. And I said, he said, well, what do you think of that? I said, well, I'm staying right here. I am going nowhere. This is where I want to be. He said, what about your church? What about your wife and family? What about your workplace? And I looked down. I said, I've got to go back, haven't I? I can't stay at this place. My job is on the earth to chip away at it, to keep doing, to keep building, isn't it? He said, yep. So he sent me back. This little red horse you see here matches. He bucks and he gets carried away. And I wear a crash hat. I rode across Australia wearing a crash hat. Everywhere I go, I wear a crash hat. Well, I didn't wear a crash hat. I went and grabbed my cowboy hat. I pulled it over my head. I went and caught that little fella and I threw the saddle on. I didn't even warm him up. I threw that foot in the stirrup and I hit that saddle. And when I hit it, I was in a flat gallop from the minute I stepped on him and he didn't know what to do. And I spun him left, I spun him right, I spun him around and I hit the brakes and I rode like nothing was bothering me. My wife pulled in the driveway with her mouth dropped open. She looked up to watch the lunatic husband just belting around the arena, flat chat, hitting the brakes, spinning and turning and jumping. And she looked out in the car. She said, are you okay? Never been better. I had absolutely no fear of anything. And he said to me when I left that room with him, you can come here anytime you like. You can come here anytime you like. Uh, there's still things in Bill that have got to get put right. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, but there's something, there's something about us all as Aussies uniting and laying down our weapons, laying down our belief systems, um, laying down even everything we think we know about the Lord and about God, because we don't know anything. And I've got to put both hands up. He wants us just to lay everything down and just go and stand with one another. Um, he wants us to be a lamp to the world. Yes, I'm his beloved son and he's well pleased. Um, he sees me as I am when fear gets in. He sees me as real. Um, and he knows that I know that I'm nothing without him. And I think that's why he sticks with me, because the deepest part of my heart knows that and accept that. So even with all my faults and all my wrongs, I really know my origin. We talk about Aboriginality, which is the original person of the land. We talk about our country of origin. I know where I came from, and I came from God before anything was ever thought of. 
and I know that. I miss a lot of things, but I know that. And I think he thinks I'm okay because of that. Bye.